stacked as you can see and they are realigned. You can tell that because if you look at the top of the image, you can see the transparency and how it's rotated and skewed. That is what the software has done automatically. So you can clearly see there's people in the scene. Go to the next photo, people in the scene, the next photo, people, 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 people walking all over the place. Now let me start turning on more and more layers. As I do more and la more layers, you see how they start to blend together and eventually the people start to disappear. And I'll just keep adding one after another after another. And if I had enough photos, the people would completely disappear. Unfortunately, I didn't get enough. So we have echoes of people standing down there, standing over here. I just didn't quite get enough pictures. So in this case, you're thinking, well, bummer, I didn't achieve what I wanted. But I still want to kind of get rid of the people or something. Well, here's a super cool, fun thing to do. Top, very top uh, of the menu, just above the live stack, there's the three dots. I open that and I'm going to change the stack mode. And now I'm going to change it to mean. And now look at what we get. It has taken samples of every photo that had people in it and blended those together in this really, really cool function of, of kind of making this ghosty, blurry looking thing. I mean, isn't that Super cool. Isn't that neat? I just, I love that. I think that is such a cool way to represent it. Because if you think about it, if you were to do a photo of, well, a scene like this, and you eliminate all the people, that's not really realistic, right? And people are there. But you don't want the pictures of the people there. That's kind of annoying, the people, the pictures of the people, there, people. But if you do this whole blurry, smeary people thing, there were people, there are people, but they're not distracting from the scene. I think it's so cool. I love it. I'm going to have to, like, finish tweet. Uh, treating this picture and post it somewhere because that's that's super crazy cool. Uh, yes, that's all there is to it. So it's the mean and the median. Those are the two primary ones that you're going to mix with, uh, play with. And then there's maximum that does things like it did for the um, for the star trails. What was it? I did. There was one other one that I did maximum before I go to the noise. I don't remember what it was, but I'm not going to go there because it's the same thing as the macOS one. You can go back to that video to watch it. But now I want to do the noise. However, Peter Blake is asking your Star Trail photo filter has a halo around the edge on the Mac version. You showed us how to remove that. Does that function work in iOS? You're correct. Let's find out. So the the function was in the live filter. And it was a preserve alpha was the function. So I need to see if that preserve alpha function exists here in iOS. So let's bring this up. I've just opened this up again. And I need to figure out how to bring up the functions again. Let's see here. Okay, there's the tools. By the way, the way I got to that, um, down in the bottom left, there's, I don't know what happened to my, my zoom. How do I zoom more? Sorry, I zoomed. Nope, that's not it. I've got this three finger tap to zoom and I forget how to make it zoom more. And somehow I screwed that up along the way and it's not zooming in as far as it used to. And I don't remember how to do that now. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to fix that. Anyway, bottom left, you see that little kind of icon there. If I tap on that, it brings up these commands. There's the radius and the angle. Well, that's not applied to this though, is it? Hmm, it may not be that actual function. Let's try looking in here. Uh, master L, no, master source, no. Visible lock. Hmm, we're looking for the filter controls. Hmm, oh, I don't know. Let's turn that off, let me just try again. We'll add another filter, I'm just gonna add anything. We'll use the add noise because that's handy and it's there. Before, after, I don't see it, I, it may not be there. It may not be there. I mean, this does this does come up where the there are not all the same functions in there. So the short answer is I can't find it. The long answer is it may not be there. Um, and we've come across this before where functions just don't exist on iOS that did on, on Mac OS. So bummer that. Okay, now I gotta show you the other thing that I was playing with. This is the new one, which is crazy cool. So this one, if we can do object removal, let's think about this for a moment. If you can do object removal, I, you can take a picture of a scene like we just did, the, the uh, Stockholm Street, and anything that moves over time and things that are will eventually go away. You get enough pictures, it goes away. So what else changes if you put a camera, if you point the camera at a solid subject, not moving, nothing's moving, nothing's moving. You take 20 pictures. What's going to be the difference in every picture? The noise, right? The noise is different. Where the noise shows up in the picture is different in every single photo. So with that in mind, you could theoretically stack a whole bunch of pictures and eliminate the noise. You've just watched a five minute sample of a live training video. 
To see the rest of it, head to photoapps.expert slash live where you can purchase and download it or sign up as a member. Members can stream any live training video as often as they like and have access to video tips and other exclusive member bonuses. To learn more about membership, head to photoapps.expert slash members. <laughs>